many of you just getting into cryptocurrency investing or thinking about getting into cryptocurrency investing may wonder what is the difference between cryptocurrency investing and stock market investing. I'm glad you asked. Stick around, I'll tell you how. Hey YouTube, it's your girl, The Real Teddy Talks, educating you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on entrepreneurship, hustling your grind, and building generations. I'm gonna keep this video short because I'm just getting over cold and my throat is killing me. <laughs> but I'm gonna get it out there for you. So, what's the difference between cryptocurrency investing and stock market investing? Um, I would say the three main differences are the type of assets, the age and maturity of each exchange, and its volatility. There are other differences, but I think those are the biggest ones. So the first thing, the asset. What's a coin or a token and how it differs from a stock? When you buy stock on the stock market, whether it's the New York Stock Exchange or um, whatever you're investing in, whatever country you're in or what market you're investing in, you are generally buying a share of that company. Apple, for instance, you buy Apple stock, you're buying a share into, the, into Apple. Um, once you purchase that share, you will be notified through your exchange of events happening, um, stock splits, news, good and bad, um, various other things because you are an owner of that company. But when you buy a cryptocurrency coin or token, you do not necessarily own a share of that company. And the value of that coin and token is subjective. And right now, in 2021, at, and before, the value of it or the cost of it is determined by supply and demand. And that's how many coins are out there and how many people are buying them, and that affects the price. So that's one of the similarities slash differences. However, when you buy into a coin or token that has a limited supply, the next assumption is that as the supply is reaching its capacity, the value of that coin or token, if it's based upon something valuable, will only increase. For instance, Bitcoin. I think the last I checked, there have been 18 million plus Bitcoins that have been issued. And there's only ever going to be 21 um, million of them out there. So the closer we get to issuing out that 21 million Bitcoin, the assumption is the much higher in value the Bitcoin will be. Because once you hit that cap, the only way someone can get a portion of a Bitcoin or a whole Bitcoin is if someone's selling. So that supply and demand gets more tenuous, right? Um, which would make cryptocurrency more advantageous at that moment because of its lack of supply. The next thing we're talking about is the maturity and age of each different exchange. The stock market itself has been around, I think, since the late 1600s um, and really kind of took off. I would say in America in the 1900s, even though it had been around before, but people could really start making money um, in the 1900s. Otherwise, people wouldn't have been so affected by the Great Depression, right? From that point and through its ebbs and flows, people have made multi-trillions of dollars. And if your grandparents, for instance, had got into the stock market in the late 30s or 40s, if they were fortunate enough to do that and continuously put some money in there, they would have to be millionaires. Like if they invested steadily in good stocks in the stock market from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s on, they would have to be millionaires. There's no, there's no way around it, right? So that's a good thing. Cryptocurrency is relatively new. Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency didn't come around until 2008. And I don't think most people even really knew what it was until maybe 2013, 2014. Every year, now we're in 2021, there's still people who don't know what Bitcoin is, still don't know what cryptocurrency is. So if you get into cryptocurrency now, you will be an early adopter. You'd be like someone investing in the stock market in the 1900s, all right? Like early 1900s, like 1901 or 1910 or 1920. Um, and even after the Great Depression, could you imagine saying, I'm gonna put my money back into the system that broke my family or broke my um, investments or broke my savings? People would probably look at them as an insane person but had they steadily, dollar cost average since then, they'd have to be multimillionaires. Um, and their family, their generational wealth had to grow if they continued to do that. So that's where you are in cryptocurrency. We're in the early adopter phase. 
so you still have the opportunity to make money. And then the final difference is volatility. Some would say the stock market's not volatile, and anyone invested in the stock market in 2007 would beg to differ, and that's all I can say. Every market is volatile. Every representation of wealth is subjective. And if you don't believe that, ask the people who invested in Enron in 2007. I'm sure there was no subjectivity in their investment and what they thought they were doing. However, the company was lying, the regulation wasn't doing what they're supposed to do, the regulators. So bad things happened and people lost fortunes. They lost their retirements, they lost their homes. The economy suffered tremendously because of the lies being told. Cryptocurrency is no different. It is being regulated. Um, it's a new thing. It's going through that innovative phase. So it's going to change form. And there are people who are scamming people in certain cryptocurrencies and whatnot. But if you do your due diligence and do your research, you should be more successful than not in cryptocurrency. So although cryptocurrency vi appears volatile now, and it's doing a lot of growth and increasing growth at higher rates than the stock market is now, it's a good thing because it's in that phase where it should be doing those things. It's in its growing and shrinking phase, and growing and shrinking phase, so it's supposed to look volatile. And if you're invested in it, that should mean nothing but benefit for you if you keep your money where it's at and invest in coins that have a good purpose, a good project, a good team behind them. So that's all I have. I told you what the, the three main differences and similarities between the stock market and cryptocurrency exchanges are. I encourage you to do your own research. I'm not a stock market um, financial advisor, a cryptocurrency financial advisor. So do your own research, learn from your own perspective, and I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised and pleased at what you find out. Invest in yourself as 1% a day, reach your exponential greatness, and have phenomenal results at the end of any given year. This is the Real Teddy Talks, signing off.